The winter sports season has concluded. The spring sports season is right around the corner for the Rhode Island Interscholastic League. Hi, everybody. I'm Stone Freeman here with your view, and we are excited to be joined again by the Rhode Island Interscholastic League Executive Director, uh, Mike Lunny, who has uh, been gracious with his time over the past couple of years to join us and give us some updates on the league. So, uh, Mike, first off, thank you for joining us here uh, this afternoon. Hi, Stone. Great to be with you again. Yeah, this is, uh, again, kind of not so much a crossover because the winter season um, has concluded, but love to talk to you this time of year with winter wrapping up going into the spring season. Um, I know there was some challenges with winter, obviously COVID uh, starting to be behind us, um, but with dealing with facilities and getting teams into arenas to play um, these championships uh, in the winter, what was that like for you and your staff this season? Well, first of all, I really want to thank um, all of our venues for working with us because obviously when we're uh, planning for our tournaments, um, we have to do that well in advance, like months in advance. And, and with COVID uh, restrictions the way they were, there was a lot of uncertainty coming into the tournaments as to where we would be. You know, could we have spectators? Um, you know, what what's the masking policy is going to be at, at the different venues? So, you know, I really want to... Uh, uh, throw a shout out to Rhode Island College, uh, or Providence College, uh, the you know, University of Rhode Island and the Ryan Center, uh, Boss Arena, uh, Brown University. I mean, all of those, all of those, Roger Williams University as well. I don't want to miss anyone. Um, they, uh, they worked with us uh, hand in hand, uh, day to day, uh, just adjusting with everything that was going on. And um, so the beginning of the, of the playoffs were uh, very much, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a different set of uh, standards at every different every facility that we were using. So, um, but at the end of it, it, it really kind of felt normal where masks were coming off. Spectators didn't have to wear masks. And yeah, that's is uh, that's certainly you know something difficult to navigate, especially the the likes of those venues. Um, one other thing that the Interscholastic League wrapped up uh, just a couple days ago was the Spirit Challenge. If you could give us some more information on that, I think it's a great idea, kind of that bracket format right around March Madness uh, here at the NCAA level. Um, but getting some you know Twitter polls going and getting some fan bases excited to you know compete against one another. What is that Spirit Challenge and what has it brought to the Interscholastic League? Well, first of all, it, it was born out of uh, COVID and uh, back when I think it was in March of 2020 when things shut down and we had no high school sports for the first time uh, ever. Uh, it was uh, it was just a crazy time and we were trying to just bring um, spirit and pride and community uh, engagement, uh, you know, to the schools because there were no activities going on. Um, so what we did was we just uh, literally just took the March Madness idea and just uh, uh, put uh, schools into a bracket, uh, set up little Twitter polls, uh, and then uh, round by round, we just had schools pitted against each other and tried to show their their support for uh, their school and community. Uh, and it really took off. It was a very, very popular thing. And um, we tried to put natural rivalries together uh, in, in the opening rounds and then just kind of see how things went. So uh, we brought that back again this year, uh, Navigant Credit Union, uh, one of our partners uh, sponsored it, and um, we just finished up um, uh, last week. And uh, Davies Davies Tech out of uh, uh, out of Lincoln, Kentucky area, just ended up winning the uh, the whole thing. So it was uh, kind of a Cinderella story because it's a small school, and uh, but they got a big following. Yeah, that's great to see some of those small uh, fan bases and, and smaller schools get some representation as well. And one of, again, as Mike talked about, kind of those things that start in COVID and can continue to blossom uh, out of the pandemic. So that's that's excellent as well. Uh, transitioning a little bit into the spring sports season, of course, winter behind us, champions have been crowned, but the, uh, the spring sports calendar officially started on March 21st with teams being able to practice. Uh, just your general thoughts, excited to get spring underway. Of course, that comes warm weather and, and the ocean state it's just beautiful this time of year, but for the interscholastic league, what challenges, what opportunities, you know, both positives and negatives open up this time of year with spring sports coming around? Yeah. So everybody started on Monday. Um, actually the week before we had pitchers and catchers were able to, to start throwing. Um, and, uh, but anyway, everyone started on, on Monday. And uh, I think the first thing that comes to mind when we're looking at this particular spring is that it's, it's going to be the first full spring uh, traditional full spring season that we've had in, in a couple of years. So, um, you know, there's been reduced seasons, uh, obviously the spring season in, in March of 2020 um, just never even happened. So 
uh, we're really excited to, to be able to have full schedules. Um, and normally this time of year, uh, teams are not able to get outside on that first day. And uh, the sun was actually out on Monday. Um, so I think teams got out. Uh, it was a little bad weather coming in at the end of this week, but uh, hopefully they'll get out on the fields early, uh, be able to get their games going. And uh, things are going to start getting better as the, as the year goes on. Uh, uh, end of the year proms and graduations and all those normal activities that we haven't really experienced in a couple of years are coming back to our school. So it's a really exciting time. Yeah. Do you have um, dates on the top of your head? You know, when competition begins, of, of course, it's exciting to get student athletes just playing again. But when will we see the first games and matches of, uh, of the spring? So Monday's the first uh, day of official practice. They've got to get 10 practice days in before they can play a game. Um, so, you know, I would say by the end of next week, if, if things are uh, are okay and the fields are ready, um, people will be able to start playing uh, actual games. Um, so that's, that's, that's exciting. But sometimes, you know, the weather just delays that a little bit longer. Um, but usually right around the 1st of April is when, the, when teams start to be able to play competitions. That's excellent. Uh, you talked a little bit about the the venues for winter. Um, in terms of the spring sports, where can we see championships being played? Of course, it's not until May, June, uh, the, the, the you know when the summer's starting to roll around at the end of the spring season. But where will uh, these championships be taking place for uh, spring sports? So, yeah, so we're we're kind of locking down a lot of them now, um, and the couple of challenges this spring are going to be, uh, uh, particularly in our ten with our tennis championships. Um, Slater Park has always been our home for our, our championships in the fall and spring. Um, and they are doing some renovations right now. So we're not that those courts are not going to be available to us. And they've been so good to us over the years. So we're, um, you know, we're looking at some different venues to host that for, for this, uh, this coming spring. Uh, baseball and softball will be at uh, Rhode Island College as well as volleyball for boys. That'll be at Rhode Island College. Um, uh, lacrosse is, uh, we're still working on some venues and talking to some of the college, uh, venues that, that we, uh, that we'd like to maybe see, uh, happen, but they're not confirmed yet. Um, and, uh, so yeah, our golf championships are always at Cranston country club and the people there, uh, just been tremendous to us, uh, given, given us the course for two days, uh, to, to run our championships and. Um, so it's a fun time of the year. Our track championships, uh, you know, again, uh, there's some renovations going on at Brown, which has been our traditional site. So we're looking at, uh, at alternatives for, for this year as well. Uh, and all that hopefully will be coming together in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, that's excellent. Good to see, too. Uh, I know we've talked about this a couple of times over the last couple of years with us talking, but good to see some of the, the colleges represented getting student athletes on college campuses. Again, it's a question I've asked you before, but I think it bears repeating. Uh, being able to get student athletes playing some of these matches inside college arenas uh, in places that they probably grew up seeing interscholastic you know, game, games played. Uh, how important is that to the student athlete experience? It's, it's always, I mean, I think, you know, you have the first day of, of spring sports practice and, and kids start dreaming of, of uh, getting to the championship level, right? And, and so when we can get them into these uh, uh, college facilities and, uh, you know, just having that as a goal on their calendar to try to get to those levels uh, is important to them. Um, but mo most importantly, again, like you said, it just gets them on a college campus, um, gets them a little bit of a different field from what what happens in the regular season. So any, any time that we can do that, um, I think it's an important, uh, uh, you know, way for us to, to provide a great experience for them at the end of the season and, and a goal to shoot for. Yeah. You know, you talked a little about the Ryan center, uh, of course for basketball in particular, but I think it's kind of been coined by a lot of teams, you know, that road to the Ryan center, as an example of just getting, you know, like you're saying, Mike, out of, of that, you know, traditional high school feel and onto a college campus is, uh, is critically important. Um, last thing for you, there's uh, an event coming up at the end of May. It'll be towards, you know, the end of the season here, but the uh, the Student Athlete Awards Luncheon. Uh, what is that about? Gives out some leadership awards, but can you tell us a little bit about the, that event? Yeah, so May 11th um, is going to be our Student Athlete Awards Luncheon. Now, we give out, um, you know, we give out a lot of awards on that day, but the, uh, the highlight of that event is our Student Athletes of the Year. Um, and... You know, so what we ask is that each school nominate uh, their top two um, student athletes. And um, and again, it's not just the uh, kids that are the best athletes in the school that we're looking for. We're looking for that well-rounded kid um, that, uh, you know, is, is a good student. Uh, he's got great leadership qualities, sportsmanship, um, athletic ability. 
uh, that whole combination of all of those things. Community service is important in that whole thing. So we, we have a series of awards that we give out at that awards lunch. It's a great way to end, this, that end the uh, year um, and, and just bringing kids together and being able to recognize their accomplishments. So, um, you know, we do give out some other awards to, uh, uh, to administrators and coaches and, and distinguished service type awards. Um, so it's really a fun event. And, and again, during COVID, it was, uh, we didn't get a couple, we didn't get some opportunities to do that. Last year, we were able to bring it back in a smaller scale. Uh, but this year we're going full force again. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, by the way, it's going to be at Valley Country Club, uh, on May 11th. And, uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, to celebrating the year in athletics in, in Rhode Island. Yeah, certainly exciting. Again, a busy time of year for the Rhode Island Interscholastic League. Mike, thanks for joining us. As always, we uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, it's always fun, Stone, and appreciate uh, all, all that you're doing. And uh, there's a lot of great things happening across the state. And uh, it's just nice to be uh, nice to be part of it. Excellent. Excellent. We get you for sure. Uh, again, you can follow all things Rhode Island Interscholastic League uh, here on your view and your view.com. Thanks so much again to Mike and the uh, Rhode Island Interscholastic League. We'll do this again in a couple months. Have a great day, everybody.